Welcome to another CCRN review practice video. This video focuses on questions 1 through 10 for the renal system. Let's get started. Question 1. A patient was recently admitted to your unit and has a serum potassium level of 8.9 with ECG signs of bradycardia and widening of the QRS. Which of the following would be most appropriate? Given the patient IV calcium gluconate, IV insulin, and IV glucose. B. Given the patient caxalate by mouth. C. Given the patient hemodialysis. Or D. Given the patient a caxalate enema. A. Given the patient IV calcium gluconate, IV insulin, and IV glucose. The calcium administered will help stabilize the cell membranes while allowing insulin to push potassium into the intracellular space, thus decreasing the intravenous potassium level. The time it would take dialysis and caxalate to reduce the potassium would take too long as the patient is already symptomatic. Question 2. A 19-year-old male patient, status post motor vehicle accident, has multi-system organ dysfunction with a current BUN level of 62, a serum creatinine level of 6.2, a blood pressure of 96 over 50, with signs of fluid overload. Which of the following treatments would be most beneficial? A. Hemodialysis B. Peritoneal dialysis C. Loop diuretics or D. Continuous renal replacement therapy And the answer is D, continuous renal replacement therapy. This patient has multi-organ system dysfunction with acute renal failure and has hemodynamic instability. The patient would not tolerate intermittent dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis is not indicated in acute renal failure, thus leaving CRRT the most appropriate treatment due to the patient's complex status. Loop diuretics has not been shown to improve the outcome of acute renal failure. Question 3. A patient with renal failure has the following arterial blood gas. A pH level of 7.31, PaCO2 of 35, and a HCO3 of 19. This is due to the inability of the kidneys to A. Excrete carbon dioxide B. Excrete calcium ions C. Excrete the byproducts of acid from metabolism or D, excrete bicarbonate ions? And the answer is C, excrete the byproducts of acid from metabolism. The accumulation of hydrogen ions from metabolism occurs during renal failure in which the bicarbonate drops in its attempt to correct the acidemia. This rules out the kidney's inability to excrete bicarbonate. The CO2 excretion is not a problem and the calcium level is not available. Question 4. A 40 year old man developed acute renal failure after a severe acute lower gastrointestinal bleed. Which of the following lab values would the patient most likely have? A. Low urine osmolality, low urine sodium concentration. B. Low urine osmolality, high urine sodium concentration. C. High urine osmolality, low urine sodium concentration. Or D high urine osmolality, high urine sodium concentration. And the answer is C, high urine osmolality, low urine sodium concentration. The volume depletion from the acute lower GI bleed will result in pre-renal failure, thus preserving the function of the membranes in the tubules. This allows the normal function of the tubules to concentrate urine and reabsorb sodium. Choice B, is typically seen in intrarenal failure, which would also demonstrate damage to the tubular membranes. The other choices are not typical during renal disease. Question 5. Your patient goes to the CT scanner and is administered a normal dose of contrast infusion. Which of the following interventions is a priority? A. Giving the patient antibiotics. B. Ensuring adequate fluid intake. C placing the patient on a fluid restriction, or D, providing the patient with extra sodium. 
And the answer is B, ensuring adequate fluid intake. Patients at risk of nephropathy can be pushed into nephropathy from a contrast infusion. An increase in fluid administration post and pre infusion has been shown to reduce the risk of contrast induced nephropathy, thus preventing the patient from experiencing renal damage. The other choices do not reduce that risk. Question 6. The action of furosemide includes which of the following actions? A. It acts as an ADH antagonist. B. It acts as an aldosterone antagonist. C. It acts as an osmotic diuretic, pulling fluid into the renal tubules. D. It acts on the ascending loop of Henle to decrease water and sodium absorption. And the answer is D. It acts on the ascending loop of Henle to decrease water and sodium absorption. Furosemide reduces the reabsorption of sodium and water, thus leading to diuresis, and is not an osmotic diuretic. It also does not block ADH or aldosterone. Question 7. What is the best lab test to evaluate the renal function and glomerular filtration rate of a patient? A. Serum lipase B. Serum creatinine C. Urine creatinine clearance or D. Blood urea nitrogen And the answer is C. Urine creatinine clearance The urine creatinine clearance best indicates the patient's glomerular fil filtration rate and subsequently the tubular function of the kidneys. Serum creatinine is better than the BUN for evaluating GFR and is used to calculate the GFR. However, it is not the best lab test for indicating the GFR. Serum lipase does not indicate renal function. Question 8. Which of the following patient conditions best reflects post-renal failure? A. Serum creatinine of 2.5 milliequivalents per liter. B. Hypovolemia. C. Hydronephrosis due to benign prostate hyperplasia. Or D. Urinary tract infection. The answer is C. Hydronephrosis due to benign prostate hyperplasia. A post-renal failure condition is one that is of an obstruction. The obstruction could be anywhere from the collecting ducts of the kidney pelvis all the way down to the urethral outlet. BPH presents this obstruction and must be corrected before converting post-renal failure to intrarenal failure. Renal failure due to hypovolemia is a pre-renal failure indication. The other two choices do not specify post-renal failure, although can be present. Question 9. A 72-year-old woman fell at home while cooking and was unable to move for 36 hours. Upon admission to the hospital, her urine is dark, tea-colored, and positive for myoglobin. Her BUN level is 60, her serum creatinine level is 4.6, and a serum potassium level of 6.0. Which of the following treatment is a priority? A. Provide the patient with hemodialysis. B. Administer normal saline to maintain urine output approximately 300 milliliters per hour. C. Administered sodium bicarbonate. Or D. Administer a loop diuretic. And the answer is B. Administer normal saline to maintain urine output approximately 300 milliliters per hour. The patient's condition is the clinical presentation of rhabdomyolysis. Administering normal saline to help flush the kidneys is required to prevent permanent renal tubular damage. The other choices do not decrease the patient's chances of reducing renal tubular damage. Question 10. Using the same clinical presentation of question 9, which of the following lab values would be most likely present? A. A serum creatinine kinase level of 26,000. B. Amylase of 450. C. Bilirubin level of 4.3 or D. A troponin level of 12. The answer is A. Creatinine kinase level of 26,000. Rhabdomyolysis is a result of severe skeletal muscle damage, which releases potassium and creatinine kinase into the blood. The other choices are not likely in rhabdomyolysis. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to watch part 2. If you haven't already, subscribe to be sure you continue to get updated content from Lifelong Nursing, 
please visit lifelongnursing.com for more great content. As always, learn everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you.